The next phase is called the pre-transplant workup phase. A workup is needed to make sure that you are healthy enough to undergo the transplant that is being recommended. It is also necessary in order for UNC to obtain approval for your transplant from your insurance company. In some cases, an authorization may be required for this workup phase, and our financial coordinator will notify your insurance company, if necessary, that you are returning to UNC for these additional tests. And the fax number? Once we are cleared to proceed, your transplant coordinator will contact you to discuss which day to return to our clinic for workup. She will also inform you of any additional testing that needs to be done locally. This will be a long day, so please plan on wearing good walking shoes and pack your lunch if necessary. We also recommend that you bring a family member with you for your day of workup. It will be important to have their support and company if at all possible. Your caregiver's questions can be answered on this day as well. On the day of your workup, Please check in at the bone marrow transplant clinic unless you are told by your transplant coordinator to start somewhere else. This is the same clinic that you will have been seen at for your initial consultation. After checking in, your transplant coordinator will give you a schedule for the day that explains where you need to be and when. When at all possible, you will be personally escorted to the different testing areas because many tests are done in different buildings. All right, I got your schedule here. After you've talked with your transplant coordinator, labs will be drawn that have been ordered for your workup. These will include some basic tests, as well as some more specific labs for your transplant, such as a hepatitis panel and HIV. While it may seem like a lot of tubes are being filled and taken, the amount of blood being drawn will not hurt you in any way. Once the lab work is drawn, you will have further testing performed. A chest x-ray and an EKG will be done, as well as pulmonary function tests and a MUGA scan. Time for lunch can sometimes be fit in, and there are several cafeterias throughout the campus to choose from if you didn't pack your own lunch. Pulmonary function tests, sometimes called PFTs, are a group of tests that measure how well your lungs take in and release air. They also measure how well your lungs move oxygen into the blood. This test does not hurt, but does involve some forced and rapid breathing. The measurements taken during this test are important before transplant in order to make sure that your lungs can tolerate the transplant well. If you currently smoke, it is highly recommended that you commit to quitting before transplant. Your health care provider, either at UNC or locally, can help facilitate a smoking cessation plan for you. A MUGA scan will also be performed in our radiology department, which will help to determine how well blood is pumping through the different areas of your heart. This test is done while you are resting. A temporary IV will need to be inserted in your arm through which a special solution will be injected. This solution is a tracer, which attaches to red blood cells and passes through the heart. A special scanner then follows the substance as it moves through the heart area. This test determines if the overall squeezing strength of the heart, also called the ejection fraction, is normal. Once all of these tests are performed, you may return back to the bone marrow transplant clinic before you leave for the day. During this time, you will have a chance to meet again with the transplant coordinator, the social worker, and the financial coordinator to discuss any issues you may need to review. Your caregiver will also have a chance to meet with everyone again to clarify his or her role after the transplant. It will be important to plan on your caregiver, or a group of shared caregivers, being available once you are discharged to stay with you locally. For patients receiving their own stem cells back, called an autologous transplant, the patient and caregiver must stay in the Chapel Hill area for one to two weeks after discharge. For those patients receiving another person's stem cells, called an allogeneic transplant, the patient and caregivers must relocate to the Chapel Hill area for two to three months after discharge. If you live within a certain distance from the hospital, you may be allowed to return home upon discharge. You may want to take this opportunity to discuss housing options after transplant with the social worker. Many of our patients stay at the State Employees Credit Union Family House, located within a few miles of the hospital. Family House is open to all families with an adult patient being treated for a critical illness or injury at UNC hospitals or clinics. Persons who are direct and primary caregivers, but not members of the patient's immediate family, are also welcome at the house. All room referrals are made by UNC hospitals personnel. The social worker can also recommend other housing as well. 
Now is the time to think about where you will stay after you are discharged. Our financial coordinator will let you know if you have travel and lodging benefits available through your insurance company. If you do not, we can help you investigate additional options. During your pre-transplant workup day, the timing for your upcoming transplant may be discussed as well. Your transplant coordinator will go over the tentative plans for your preparatory regimen as well as your day of transplant. Your preparatory regimen includes the medications you will receive prior to the infusion of your stem cells. This can be anywhere from one day to multiple days of chemotherapy, radiation, or other medications to prepare your body for receipt of the new cells. The type of treatment you will need will be determined by the transplant physician. Whether you receive an infusion of your own cells or someone else's cells for the transplant is many times determined by the type of disease you have. Your transplant nurse coordinator may discuss your upcoming calendar for the transplant. Patients who receive an autologous transplant will have approximately two to three weeks of outpatient preparation when their stem cells are stimulated or mobilized for collection. During this mobilization time, you will need to stay in Chapel Hill for several days as an outpatient, and then you can return home. Once it's time for the stem cells to be collected, you'll need to return again to UNC as an outpatient in order for the collection to take place. Once enough stem cells have been collected for your transplant, admission to the hospital can occur soon thereafter. If you are receiving an allogeneic transplant, it may be difficult to confirm an admission date during this workup phase, especially if you are in need of an unrelated donor for your cells. Your transplant coordinator will be in contact with you throughout the search process to make sure you are aware of how things are going. And if a sibling donor is identified, we will let your sibling know that they are a match first to protect their private health information. Either way, once a donor is determined, we will be able to work toward your transplant admission date with more certainty. At that point, we will create a transplant calendar for you to review. You may also be given a copy of a consent for treatment that outlines the medications for your transplant, the risks and benefits, the side effects, and potential complications. You will not sign this consent for transplant today, but please plan to bring it home with you to review thoroughly. This copy is yours, so feel free to highlight certain areas or write your questions in the margins. We want you to have all of your questions answered before you are admitted for transplant, so plan on reading this document more than once. You may contact the transplant team at any time to review your questions. Once your workup and additional consultations are complete, you will be able to return home. A lot of tests have been done on this day, and a lot more has been learned about transplant. We know this can be overwhelming. Please call us once home for any questions or clarifications. Once the results of your workup are available, we will gather all of the information and send a request for medical necessity to your insurance company. This will include a letter outlining your proposed plan of care with the preparatory regimen and type of stem cell source you will be receiving, either autologous or allogeneic. Once we have final approval from your insurance company to proceed, we will contact you to confirm your date of admission. Your transplant coordinator will let you know how to prepare your belongings that you'll be bringing into the bone marrow unit. A family conference will be held where any final questions you may have will be answered. If not done previously, your consent for treatment will be signed and witnessed. Information about data submission will be provided, and family caregiver obligations will be reviewed again. Once this is all in place, you're ready to move into the next phase, the transplant admission.